if, if that's fine with you, I would just start. Yes, please. Okay, so my name is Dietmar Gadwinkel. I'm a policy officer um, at the um, European Commission um, and uh, as a conduct national ex uh, expert from Germany, as you will uh, certainly know from my heavy accent. Um, the European Commission uh, is or has been promoting digital technologies in government for a long time. And that's uh, because we think that digital technologies are integral for the innovation of uh, government, uh, which in turn is necessary to keep administrations adaptive and fit for purpose. And um, that uh, means that digital technologies are uh, able to promote more and efficient methods of providing services to citizens and businesses, but they are also able to actually enable um, clearly improved or even new services that without digital technologies, government wouldn't even be able to hand out or to uh, deliver to uh, citizens. They are further um, able to improve the methods of organizing and managing work and to uh, promote uh, the um, communication of um, uh, government services. So what you have in effect is process innovation, product innovation, organizational innovation and communication innovation. All this we hope to promote through digital means. And uh, of course we know that the, the technology alone does not constitute innovation. You also have to um, uh, get the right organizational um, uh, setup and the, uh, the, 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 the right state of mind. But nevertheless, without digital, I think we can say uh, that it is hard to innovate these days. For the past couple of um, years though, we have also noticed that now digitalization of society itself forces administrations to innovate. If um, while digitalization was always an enabler of innovation, it has now become um, something that, that um, governments cannot ignore if they want to stay up um, and, and meet the expectations and the needs for, of society at large. And therefore it is even more uh, fundamental that government adopts um, cutting edge technology. Yet, if you are honest, the public sector is rarely among the front runners when it comes to digital innovation. I mean, there is a, a saying that government runs on Excel sheets. Now, if I see what we use Excel sheets for, uh, they, what they were never meant to be used for, uh, this is quite fantastic. On the other hand, you have um, gigantic customized IT infrastructures that are designed by committee and not always up to their job. So there is clearly a disparity between what governments aspire to do and what they have been able to achieve in the past. Uh, and uh, when innovation occurs, here and there, then the diffusion of such innovation is uh, sometimes rather slow, meaning the adoption across the field. And that is where the European Commission has um, devoted quite some effort in the past to step in and push for that uh, through a number of programs, uh, most notable the, um, uh, the um, CEF program and the um, ISA Square program, where we provide common building blocks. Nevertheless, what we have noticed is that APIs are one of the overlooked technologies. While they are quite popular with developers, there was in the past very little encouragement by enterprise rules or strategic approaches. There have been attempts to conceptualize government as a platform, but so far this is rarely reflected in government strategies. This, the times are changing though, which is the good news. 
Um, we have um, a few um, European um, uh, policies that now explicitly mention APIs, most notable the um, public sector um, information directive or now also called the open data directive which explicitly mentions the use of APIs to expose high value data sets. And so in 2018 the commission set out uh, to um, provide more insight into APIs with a study uh, entitled APIs for Digital Government. Um, the last of the reports um, that resulted from this study has just been published and I'm sure the JRC is going to um, tell us a little bit more about this in, in a few minutes. Um, but then um, in 2019 actually member states called for um, what I would call it a, a new toolbox of, of strategic essentials or so strategy essentials that could be used to set up a landscape of APIs in European digital government and this is where this event is situated in. So I'm very happy that we have these events. Um, um, we had fantastic reactions to the, um, to the last study and I hope we can continue this. Um, we can continue the successful um, cooperation with API days which has benefited the last study a lot um, and uh, of course um, the uh, participation um, of all of you here um, is, is very vital uh, for us to get the right inputs and then produce the right outputs. So uh, I say thank you very much for all of you attending this event and uh, I wish you a very uh, successful uh, hours. Thank you. Thank you, Dietmar. And now I think we are ready for Mark Boyd to talk about adoption of APIs in government. Uh, so this is the first part of, of the session and, and uh, we have Mark here and maybe we will get Monica to, to um, say something when he, she gets the, the text sorted out. But uh, I can see now Mark's screen and can we get voice and maybe face too. <laughs> Okay. Hey there, everyone. <laughs> hey, thanks, Mayuka, and thanks, Deepa, for the introduction. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is Mark Boyd. I use the pronouns he and him. So I'll, uh, I was one of the um, co-authors of the API framework for digital government. So uh, I've been asked to speak to just sort of introduce that um, document and the work that we've done as a sort of bit of a bit further of an introduction for today's sessions. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so adoption of APIs in government. Uh, here we go. Okay. So the framework that we've created, actually, I was looking at the, there's, um, a great document called API ops as well. So, um, I recommend that, which, uh, Mayuka's team has published and made available as a free resource for everyone. A lot of what we talk about. Um, in this API framework for digital government matches that API ops, which has been written more for a, a, a business audience, but the, but so it would be great to, given the theme of today's uh, session on public and private working together, it'd be great to read them both in, in connection to each other. Um, uh, they reinforce uh, the idea around, you know, how to design APIs and manage APIs strategically. For the API framework for digital government, we've looked at three levels of government. So government has to um, involve, uh, have to, has to organise itself around strategy. So longer term vision of say three years or so, three, five, ten years. Um, then it has a, a tactical level, which is how it splits up work by department and carries that out. And then it has the operational level, which is all of the projects and programs. Um, and activities that governments do within all of those departments. So when we're thinking about APIs, we wanted to look at, okay, how do APIs 
work at that strategic, tactical and operational level. And then we looked at four key uh, uh, pillars that enable government to do its work. So the first one is policy. So all government work is directed by policy initiatives um, and some of those big strategic documents. Um, for, for, in, uh, for introducing APIs, you also need a platform and ecosystem model. So you need to understand how you're going to organize your APIs so that they're able to uh, be available to other departments or to external stakeholders. You need people resources um, as far as skills, but also how they how um, an organization organizes people into groups uh, and you need processes. So you need consistent approaches that can be that are repeatable and that can be built on best practice. So we organized the API framework, as you can see here, into those four pillars across the three uh, levels of government. The the AP, uh, an application interface framework for digital government uh, we, has been released as one of the two documents. Lauren Zeno will talk about the other documents and the wider study that's done in that pack. The, if you wanted to read this, it uh, explains then how you could take an API approach across government. So what we did is we studied best practices from government and industry and then pulled out all of those and then organized them by that um, 12, uh, 12, 12 component uh, framework. So we call them the 12 proposals. One quick note around that, and you can see here also we've created some bit.ly links. So a really easy one to remember uh, to access that uh, API framework. One of the things though we were really careful of with creating this framework is that it's not a linear process. So we're not saying you need to start with one, which was, um, uh, uh, which was, you know, align APIs with policy goals. You don't necessarily start there. You start wherever you're at. So what, what we find is that because at the moment, what's happening with governments is that there are a number of API activities that are happening, but quite often they're siloed and they're happening in each individual department or even within just a project. The idea of the framework is that by looking through the framework, you're able to start making those connections between all of those different API activities and pull up your, uh, your strategic and cohesion, cohesive sort of processes so that they're um, connecting a lot more and that you're drawing on the same sort of practices for everything. Um, so each, how to use the framework document. Each proposal discusses the main idea. So here you can see one, the final proposal in the series is to adopt an API lifecycle approach. So we briefly describe then what an API lifecycle approach is. And then we talk about what the level of evidence that's involved. So as I said, we've drawn on a whole range of best practice documents. Some areas, there's not a, a huge amount of evidence. So what we've had to do is say, look, based on everything we know from industry and from what some of the frontier experience in government is, we think this is the best approach, but it needs further validation. But in this case, with adopting an API lifecycle approach, we've said that there is strong evidence because we've got that from industry, from documents like I said, the API ops cycle approach. Um, and so, you know, like there are best practices around um, adopting design, creating and managing APIs. Then we talk about some key implementation considerations. So our proposal is adopt an API lifecycle approach. And then in the implementation, we've described some of those things, you know, def define appropriate authentication, ensure standard metadata. So use, using open API specification, for example, create style guidelines, ensure cyber security and data privacy controls are included. So we've sort of said some of the key uh, themes that should be included in the API lifecycle approach. And I think a lot of what you'll hear for the rest of this morning will really dig down into this lifecycle um, uh, proposal in particular a lot more and talk about, okay, if you're defining appropriate authentication, authorization and access permission policies, what are they? you know, at the moment. And so that, that sort of discussion will come out today. So we've got that. Then the second part of each proposal 
it includes a self-assessment checklist. So you can go through and see where you're at. And this comes back to that idea that you don't need to be at the start and work through from one to 12 in order. So here you can go through and you can sort of ask yourself the different questions about where are you on the level of maturity around implementing a life cycle approach. Uh, we've also created a, an interactive tool and here you can see the bit.ly link where you can actually go through and uh, fill that in as a mo uh, on the mobile uh, and check that out. And then finally, we've got a key resources. So in addition to, so you can do the checklist, find out where you're at, you know, realize where you've got some gaps in your approach and then pardon me, have a look at some of the key resources to see who is doing this the best in government circles and what can you learn from them. So there's the framework in a nutshell and here are some bit.ly links we've set up so it's easy to um, find them. Um, so the API framework for the PDF document and then API framework tool for the uh, maturity online maturity checklist and uh, feel free to email me or get in touch if you want to discuss the framework or anything um, around government implementation any further. The next part of our study then is now looking at how it's going to be, uh, how you can um, use best practices around discoverability of APIs. But that, that, so that look out for that sort of project work um, later this year. But I'll now hand, hand it back to uh, Mayuka and Monica. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Are you, Monica, now ready to take us to the rest of the event and maybe some of the questions for the audience? Yeah, um, I should be able. Uh, the only thing, well, I will, I will. I need uh, someone to uh, to share my yes. my slides because um, yeah, I have to change from uh, from uh, one computer to another. To okay. be capable. Sorry, sorry about that. Sorry uh, for this. Yeah. I have them. I can do it if you want. Yes. If you can do okay. it, it'll, it'll be it'll be there. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, indeed, uh, Maduka and API Days for supporting us uh, for the organization of this event. I'm, I'm really sorry we can. I, uh, there's been this uh, this connection problem. Um, um, I'm not sure. Uh, where we are? Can you can you go to the first slide, or did you already yeah, talk sorry. about it? No, no. no, no. Okay. So, can you see it? Uh, because I, I cannot see the entire screen. So is it yes, fine? yes, okay, we can see. Fine. And you, you can put it in presentation Next mode. Just presentation. Uh, let's see if it will maintain the screen. Can you see it in the presentation mode? Yes, yes. Now we perfect. Can. Everything is okay. Perfect. Okay. So, um, if I will have a start at nine ish, um, I will have um, um, indeed uh, thank uh, Mayuka for for setting up uh, for for the the introduction and then setting up the rules of the house for 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 the event. Um, indeed, uh, we are very happy to see that this event has attracted um, such a big audience, both from uh, the public and also the private domains. Um, we, will, we want to welcome each and every one of you uh, to this uh, very first uh, uh, event of a series of events organized under the API for IPS project of the European Commission that stands for um, the API Census for Public Sector Innovation. And uh, as its names reflect, um, it aims at identifying API-related solutions and strategies to better profit the API infrastructure for triggering uh, the digital transformation of, uh, for enabling or, or supporting the digital transformation of government. In this event, uh, the, the idea is that API stakeholders from different realms, academy, industry, experts, practitioners and decision makers uh, will gather to discuss relevant issues about technical, organizational and governance um, issues. Uh, specifically, in this occasion, the ex API experts and, and practitioners from the public and private sector will present and then collaboratively discuss solutions and challenges regarding API technical essentials. If you can move to the next slide, please. 
Lorenzino. So uh, what is the objective? So the general objective of this series of, of events is to unveil uh, secure, reliable and sustainable paths for the innovation of public sector, uh, of the public sector using APIs. Uh, the how is by establishing um, a dialogue between uh, public and private uh, uh, practitioners um, uh, including also um, academy and uh, experts and, uh, and, and um, even if necessary uh, the citizens as well. And the, the, the objective is jointly identifying solutions and analyzing the challenges regarding um, a, a specific API aspect. And in this event in, in particular, we are going to tackle technical aspects such as the life cycle management of the versioning of APIs, discoverability, the use of the standards and the security. And we expect that both public and private uh, practitioners can benefit from this P learning exercise. Next slide, please. So uh, the agenda, uh, did you went through it briefly? So um, if not, I will, I will just say that uh, it has three parts. Um, we are getting to an end to the beginning. So the introductory part on which the digital government vision will be, has been stated, I guess. And that, um, and, um, and, and, and the, the, the role of APIs on this uh, digital government vision has been uh, located. Um, and some ideas uh, that Mark has introduced about um, the proposal of how to adopt uh, APIs in the public uh, in, in the public sector. Then uh, public uh, API practitioners will uh, introduce uh, their uh, their approaches to to the topics that the, the this event is about, and um, we have. Um, representatives from a European, uh, at the European level and a national level, from France, Estonia and Italy. And then in, in the, uh, the third part of the, of the agenda is a discussion panel with, uh, that, on which we want also to, that, that all the audience can actively participate. The panel chair is composed by um, uh, the, the panel is composed by the, the chair Majuka Niñoa, uh, and then uh, Alan Glickenhaus uh, as a representative of the private sector, big companies, and Lorenzino Bacari as um, the as a European Commission consultant in, uh, from the public sector. The dynamics of the events. If you go to the next uh, slide, please. Am I there? Yes. So uh, we've created uh, an interactive uh, approach to to uh, to to get into in, in to, to facilitate the discussion between all the uh, participants. So we've created a pool in a Slido, on which uh, we we have. Um, we have uh, 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 created a number of questions around uh, the topics that are discussed today. And uh, we hope that the, if, if you all answer to it, we, it will be a great opportunity to have a quick overview on the issues and topics that uh, do most concern you regarding the API technical essentials. We encourage you to, to join this slide ascension and fill our simple questions so that uh, uh, you can also push uh, specific additional questions uh, from, from the application um, and both to the experts and, and the practitioners that are presenting today. Uh, you can also at any time use the, the Zoom chats to post uh, questions for both for the speakers and for the experts of the panel. This, of the panel. And uh, at the end, uh, during the discussion panel, if we've had reached um, a good number of responses on this ladder in on this Lido session, uh, we will be um, we will be um, briefing you on uh, on a quick analysis of, of the results. 
Of course, uh, you can contact us offline as well uh, after the event if you have any further um, questions or you want to participate or collaborate to our, uh, our research uh, uh, endeavor um, at the, at the um, email that I have put there. Um, so, um, I was, uh, at the moment I was going to give the floor to Dietmar, but I guess that Dietmar has already uh, given his, uh, his words and uh, also Mark has already done it. So, um, I think that 